Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to implement our post gameplay effect execute method. The post gameplay effect execute method is run after an instant gameplay effect modifies the base value of an attribute in the attribute set. Duration and infinite gameplay effects do not trigger post gameplay effect execute as these types of gameplay effects modify the current value instead of the base value. When there are multiple attribute sets, it is called on the set that contains the attribute being modified. It is called once per attribute modified. If a single gameplay effect modifies five attributes, post gameplay effect execute is called five times for that one gameplay effect. Data.EvaluatedData.Attribute identifies which attribute was modified for this call to post gameplay effect execute. Post gameplay effect execute is a great place to apply transient attributes, clamp attribute values, and check for certain conditions based on attribute value, such as zero hit points. Let's modify our project to do some of these things in our post gameplay effect execute method of our combat attribute set class. This is the from scratch project we have been building for the last two episodes to illustrate how to add the gameplay ability system to a new project. Let's go to our HW combat attribute set and paste in some code. So first, as a private property, we have B is dead. This is a bool, and this is our death latch. We'll, we'll talk a bit, a little bit later, about how latches work and what we're doing here. We've also, as a protected function or method, we have virtual void post gameplay effect execute, and we're overriding this. And the reason that it is underlined here is because we have uh, defined it here, but we have not, uh, we've declared it, but we've not yet defined it. So now we're going to go over to HW combat attribute set CPP, and we're going to paste in our post gameplay effect execute method. There we go. And so what this is going to do is remember this is called every time that an attribute is modified via an instant gameplay effect. And it's sending us in this structure, F gameplay effect mod callback data. And it has a structure inside it called evaluated data. And inside of that, there's an attribute property. This is great because it lets us know that th even though this is being called multiple times for the same gameplay effect, it lets us know which attribute are you talking about this time. And so it, we might be asking it, oh, was this the damage attribute? Okay, do this. Was this the healing attribute? Okay, do this. Was this that? This is an error here. Let me fix this real quick. So this is actually supposed to be stamina. There wouldn't really be a need to do the health because we set a uh, metadata that health couldn't be modified directly. So there would there would be no point in checking it because it should never happen. It's always going to happen via one of these transients. So this one is actually for our stamina system. Okay, so then this one's for our stamina. That's what it's going to do. And this one's for our energy. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. So when it comes in as incoming damage, we say, okay, set the health. But what are we going to set it to? We're going to use the clamp function. The clamp function has three parameters. The first parameter says, what's the incoming value? The second parameter says, what's the minimum value? And the third parameter says, what's the maximum value? So in this case, we're taking the current health, we're subtracting the incoming damage, and we're saying now clamp that, meaning don't let it go below zero and don't let it go above what our current max health is. And so that's what we're doing when we get incoming damage. And then we're setting the transient back to zero for the next time. In the case of healing, we're doing the same thing, set health, but instead of subtracting damage, we get the current health and add our healing, and we do the same thing. We clamp it between zero and max health, so they can't go outside the range. No matter what happens, it has to stay within that range. 
Stamina and energy can be directly modified. And so we check the stamina attribute or the energy attribute. And we basically say, okay, what is the current value, right? Because this is, remember, this is after it's already modified. This isn't running before. We'll look at that next week. This is after it's already modified. And so we're saying, what's the value that was already modified? And then we're saying, okay, if you were outside of the range, fix it. Okay. And we're doing the same thing for stamina and energy. Now we're going to check for a very common condition, and that is the condition where health is less than or equal to zero. Now, in this case, it really has to be zero because we've clamped it. And so in the case up here where it was something less than zero, we're actually moving it back up to zero. This is potentially interesting for the kind of game that you're making because maybe your game has the concept of negative health. Many systems have that built in, and maybe how far you go negative uh, based on a hit has some impact on the game. So you may need to adjust how this works, how these conditions work, based on whether you have the ability to go to have health go below zero. And so you may not want to clamp that at zero. You may want to clamp it to some other some other value below zero that's your absolute lowest value, and then you may change how this condition works here. In this case, we're really just checking, is it zero? but we have a latch. The B is dead latch. So let's talk a little bit about latches. What is a latch? A latch is used to ensure that something can only happen once before it is reset. In Unreal Engine Blueprints, do once is an example of a latch. In C++, latches are usually handled with bool type variables. The B is dead latch costs us nothing until the first condition is met. This is because of how the conditions in an if statement are executed from left to right. Once a condition fails, the rest of the conditions are skipped and are not evaluated. This means our latch condition is only ever evaluated after the health of the character falls to zero. We use that in this case to increase the performance of our code. In the last video, I had stated that we weren't at the point where we could test a gameplay ability and a gameplay effect that modify our attributes. And that's because we didn't have this post gameplay effect execute to apply our transience of damage and healing. Now that we have our post gameplay effect execute, let's compile the project and give it a test. So there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to add this combat attribute set to our gas character. So we're going to go over to hwgascharacter.h and we're going to add our combat attributes. And then we're going to go to our hwgas character and we're going to initialize that. Looks like it's having trouble finding the class here, so we're going to have to add an include. We're going to go back to our hwgascharacter.h and we're going to add an include to our hw combat attribute set and we should be good to go. Now we can run this and give it a try. Let's create some folders to store our ability system blueprints for this test. Create ability system. And to that, let's add a folder for abilities. Let's add a folder for gameplay effects. And let's add a gameplay effect. Go to all classes, gameplay effect. I like to use the prefix GE, and we're going to call this damage self. We'll open this up. And we'll make sure that it's an instant type. We'll go to modifiers, and we will add a modifier. And we will be careful when selecting this to make sure that it is our correct HW combat attribute set and we're looking for our damage transient. 
HW combat attribute set. This is important here because sometimes when you have multiple attribute sets, damage might be listed multiple times once per attribute set or any of these other ones might be duplicated. So always make sure that the attribute set is correct and the attribute is correct. And we're just gonna do something simple uh, like do straight up 10 damage. So remember that we add it as positive because it gets subtracted. So we put we only do positive damage values and they'll end up subtracting from our health. So now we have our gameplay effect. Let's add a gameplay ability to apply that effect. So we're gonna come down to gameplay, gameplay ability blueprint. We'll use gameplay ability as the template. And I like to use GA underscore, we'll call it damage itself. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do something real simple here. We're going to apply, we're going to commit the ability cooldown. We don't have one, but normally have these and we'll commit the ability cost. Usually two things you do early on here. Or if we want to do both of them, we can just say commit ability. And that actually just does, just stands for doing both of them. And then after we commit the ability, we are going to apply a gameplay effect to the owner, which is ourself. And the one we're going to apply is damage self. And then of course, we're going to end the ability, otherwise it won't be able to be re-triggered. So now we have our gameplay ability. Now we need a way to activate our gameplay ability. And so we're going to come into our enhanced input system and we're going to actions and we're going to create a new action. So we're going to go to input, input action. Looks like we use IA underscore and we'll just call this uh, primary ability. Okay, and we're all set on that. And now we're going to need to give it some kind of mapping. So we're going to add it here to the mappings and we're going to say IA primary ability. And we're going to map it just uh, to keep this simple. We're going to map it to the E. e. Not enter, not end, E. So pressing E is going to trigger this. You can see here that they have like space bar. And so we're basically just copying that same type of setup here and we're using the E key. What that's gonna let us do is that's going to let us come into our character. This is just for testing. And we're gonna do primary ability. And you can see here that there's the action. And we're going to try activate ability by class. I don't usually use this because of some of the problems that it has, uh, but in, for testing, it works great. Nice and easy to set up. And we'll grab off triggered. But it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is a common thing that always gets me. And that is that we did not give the ability to the character. Now, the method we're going to use here is just for testing. Uh, we will be looking at um, ability sets in the future, which is a better way to grant a group of abilities. Uh, but since this is just a quick test, uh, what we do is we're going to come over to our begin play. And we're going to grab this here. And we're going to pull off a switch has authority. And on the remote side, we'll continue with that. And on the authority side, we're going to say give ability. 
without having this granted on the server side, it won't activate. And then we're going to basically come back to here so that it can continue to do that mapping context like it would have before. We're going to change triggered to started. What happens here is that triggered actually keeps firing multiple times, and there's no reason to do that. And so instead, we'll just do started. And it's basically like using a do once. It means that it's only going to happen when you first initially press the key down, and it's only going to fire once. So we'll use that. That'll make that a little bit easier. And now we're going to go put a breakpoint in our combat attribute set, post gameplay effect execute. Now we're going to run it and we're going to press the E key and we're going to see if it hits it. We press the E key and it hits the breakpoint. And you can see here that it was incoming damage. And so it's going to set the values. So now let's go back and see if we can print out those values. So what I've added here is I've added an event tick. And then we have the combat attribute set. We're pulling off HW get health and we're printing it to the string. But it's a little bit annoying that it just spams over and over. So let's go here to our class defaults and we'll find the tick, which we're not using for anything else. And we'll say, hey, only print that to the screen once every two seconds. That'll make it a little bit better. And then we're going to rerun this and we're going to quickly see what the issue is. So it's printing out the health on the client and the server. And you can see here, it's zero. Oh yeah, we never initialized our values. So let's go back into our third person character and we're gonna come up here, we're gonna initialize some values. So we're gonna bring our combat attribute set. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to do init max health. And we'll say that the maximum health is 100. And then we're also going to init our current health. And we'll start that at 100 as well. So by doing that, we should now have some values that we can do self damage. We can see that it's printing out 100. There we go. And so now we're going to press the E key. Look at that. It's 90. We press it again. It's 80. We press it again. It's 70. And it is working as intended. We're going to come back to the code and make a minor change here. We're going to go to the HW gas character. And we had originally put this combat attribute set in public, but that's not really what we want. What we want to do here is there's actually this meta value for allowing private access on a U property. This wasn't previously supported, but uh, this is actually the new way that Epic's doing things. So we're going to stick with it. And we're actually going to put this in private. It's not going to work exactly the same because we have allow private access equals true. So from a blueprint standpoint, it's going to work as if it's public. Uh, but from a C++ standpoint, it's going to make sure that nothing else is accessing it that shouldn't be directly accessing it. And that we use accessor functions if some other class needs to access this rather than accessing it directly. It's, it's just a nice organizational method, and we're going to follow that. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.